today we're gonna cook a pork butt, low and slow. One of my favorite ways to use leftovers is to make lumpia. Lumpia is a traditional Filipino appetizer. You roll it up in this lumpia wrappers, you fry it, it's crispy. Some, you know, some people add cheese in the middle of it. It's really delicious, I love it. It's super traditional and probably one of the most popular Filipino dishes out there. So right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a binder on here. I like to use W sauce. I'm gonna, we're gonna do that. I'm gonna use two of my favorite barbecue rubs. We're gonna get that nice and coated on here. And then we're gonna throw it on the smoker at 225 for about eight to 10 hours. And after that, we're gonna let it cool down. We'll shred it up. We're gonna roll it in some lumpia wrappers with some cheese, and then we're gonna fry it. Get it nice and crispy. So we're gonna dip it into a couple of different things. Uh, spicy vinegar, barbecue sauce, and I have a homemade gochujang sauce. Yeah, so lumpia, growing up as a child, that was one of our favorite things to eat. Uh, it's normally the first thing that's done during dinner. Uh, I would remember like my mom or my dad cooking it. I smell it. Once I hear it like hitting the plate and then you hear that crunchiness, everybody comes running in, grabs a couple of bites. Um, next thing you know, like all the lumpia is gone before dinner even arrives and uh, yeah it's it's just one of those childhood childhood memories that I'll never forget because it's one of my favorite dishes all right so first off we're gonna use some Baron Burton's W sauce one of my favorites to use as a binder so we'll put a nice little thin coat of this on the pork butt like I said it's for a binder what I like about the W sauce also is there's a lot of flavor in it too and some binders like people use uh, mustard things like that and you don't really taste the mustard at the end w sauce you definitely do taste it it'll give a nice um was it savory you know flavor at the end just make sure you rub your meat good so once this side's uh all you know this entire side's coated with it and you just need a a little thin layer that's all it needs you don't want to cake it too much because once you put the rub on there the rub's going to be all caked up so the first one i'm going to go with is another one of my favorites blazing star porkin it's like a sweet mild spicy flavor it's good on pork good on pretty much anything and then you just want to get this nice and coated so this pork and rub also has some sugar in it uh, turbinado sugar it's good to uh, produce a nice bark when it comes to pork butt you can put a lot of rub in it uh, there's so much meat uh, not enough surface area so once you break it up shred it up it'll never be too salty I mean you're probably gonna end up adding more rub after you break it all up and shred it uh, so that's a little sweet sweetness the next one I'm gonna go with is an all-purpose which is a lot it's a more salty rub I like my pork butt sweet and salty some people just like it sweet I'm a more of a savory guy but like I said with the pork butt even this sweet rub won't be too sweet for it because there's a lot of meat okay next one Ball and Rub, another one from Blazing Star, another one of my favorites and go-tos. A combination of these two with the W sauce, it's killer. I've done it plenty of times, and to be honest, it's one of my favorites to do pork, uh, pork butt. So that was the meat side, now this is the fat side. What I like to do with the fat side, I like to score it. Uh, it gets a lot more, you know, uh, seasoning into the fat cap, and also when it when it it's cooked and it renders down, the little bark pieces from you know me scoring it becomes little bite-sized little morsels that are delicious. Make sure you got a sharp knife. Score it one way. bite size from the fat cap one of my favorites 
and then we'll cross hatch it the other way. Like I said, it'll help with the rub, uh, get through to the uh, meat on the other side. More smoke. Now we add some more of that W sauce. then more rub. All right, I'm happy with that. My mom was real, sh my mom was a stay at home mom. She was the one that cooked all the time. And that's one thing I learned about <laughs> from her, was to never waste anything, all right? That's it, that looks good to me. So now we're going to get it on the smoker, real low at 225. We're putting it on the Camp Chef Woodwind Pro using Naughty Wood Almond Pellets. Let's go. Alright, so 10 hours into the cook, around 8 hours, we took it out, put it in an aluminum tray, wrapped it, uh, let it finish cooking, it got up to temp to 203. Once it hit the 203 mark, we let it rest for an hour in my Cambro. Uh, it's like an insulated cooler, and now it's time to shred. Alright, look at that. See the little little chunks of fat with the flavor like these right here little baby morsels mm. melt in your mouth oh and the flies are coming in that's how you know when your pork butt's done let me just slide that bone right out boom clean some people like to just Shred it like this so you don't burn your hands. Just take a little piece here. Beautiful pulled pork. Look at that. Does a cameraman want a bite? Cameraman want a bite? Oh, yeah. Mm. That's money. Now we're gonna set up the lumpia wrappers. Uh, I think first we're gonna get the oil in the pot. Uh, we're gonna get that to temp. We're gonna probably fry these at about 300, 350 degrees. Uh, while that's going, then we'll prep the actual lumpias. I got this little pot on Amazon. Uh, it's like a Japanese tempura pot. It helps the oil from splattering all over the place. It also gives you a little rack right here. Pretty cool. It's just a shallow fry. It doesn't need to be a deep fry. So these are one of my favorite lumpia wrappers to use. You get them at any kind of Asian market. Um, you don't want to use like egg roll wrappers or spring roll wrappers. Those fry differently. This is a lot more thinner, almost like the size of paper. So when you fry it, it doesn't take long to fry. It becomes super crispy. Uh, just way better. If you're going to do lumpias, use lumpia wrappers, please. <clears throat> One thing about lumpia wrappers is they tend to dry out real quick. So what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna prep some and see they they come like in a block and they're really really thin and you want to keep them moist so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put down a little wet paper towel on the bottom I'm gonna peel off a few place it on there and then place another wet paper towel on top of it to keep it all moist Just sip a wet paper towel 
And then real delicate. Peel them off one by one. See, it's just like paper. Place it on there. And we'll do about like five of them for now. The rest I'll put in the fridge. I like to stagger it so it's easier to grab as I'm rolling them. Otherwise you're going to be like this, trying to find the edge and peel them off. You know, a lot of people, you know, you know, especially the Filipinos, traditional Filipinos, they have different ways of doing their lumpia. This is just the way I do lumpia. It may not be traditional, but it works. And uh, if you follow me, you know that I don't do anything traditional. The rest of this, we'll put back in here, we'll put it back in the fridge, and if we need more, we'll do more. But I think for now, we'll just do five. All right, so now, we get some gloves on. Some people use egg wash to bind the lumpia at the end, but you can also just use regular water. Either one works fine. Um, so we get one of these lumpia wrappers. I like to start in the edge, one of the corners. Uh, so I'm gonna get some of this pulled pork on here. Um, let me shred it up a little bit more. So again, any kind of barbecue leftovers, it could be pulled pork, it could be brisket. I've done beef cheeks before, I've, I've done uh, brisket also. Pretty much any meat, whatever kind of filling you want, you can make lumpias with it. You don't want them too fat either, you know. You want slim lumpias. Add some of this fat in there because this fat has flavor. Like so. And with lumpia, I mean, I like to put cheese in it. Some people don't. Cheese makes everything better. You also get that nice cheese pull. It's gonna be a pretty big lumpia right here. <laughs> All right. So the first one, you wanna bring that corner over, pull it back, try to tuck all that in there nice and tight. Just like so. This is nice and tight, you wanna roll it once. Roll it once. Now you wanna get the corners in. Side. Make sure you stuff it. And then once you get the corners in, you start rolling it all the way. Till you're about that that much left, that's when you want to start wetting this down because this is what's gonna keep it together. Fatty of Olympia. Yeah. Now that we got our lumpias all rolled up, now it's just ready to fry them. Best part. Okay. 
So we're frying it at about 375. Uh, I can see the bottom of it is getting golden brown, the color that you want. So now it's time to flip it. And, and the reason why we're flipping is because we're shallow frying it. We're not deep frying it. Perfect golden brown that you're looking for. So pretty much you're just going to fry at about 375 on each side for about a minute. Uh, it doesn't take long to get it golden brown. You definitely want it to cook through, especially the layers of the lumpia wrapper, so it's super crispy. So yeah, now we're just waiting for one minute. It's about to be ready. And then what we're going to do is put it on a, a paper towel, so drain some of that residual oil from the outside. Um, and then yeah, let it cool down and be ready to eat. So we're gonna have like three different dipping sauces here for the lumpia. You can pretty much use whatever dipping sauce you want depending on what kind of filling you put in there. I like to use, you know, three different kinds at times. So one of them is a Pinoy spiced coconut vinegar. So like a spicy vinegar. This one's real good. I, like traditional lumpia, this is the kind of stuff I would dip it in. Some people like to use the sweet and sour sauce, uh, which is totally fine. That's real traditional, tr the sweet and sour or spicy vinegar. And again, I'm not really traditional. Uh, second one, we'll use barbecue sauce, Blazing Star barbecue sauce. One of my favorites that are out there. This is the regular, so it's not spicy. And this one will be coming soon. This is my own sauce. It's a gochujang based sauce. Um, I'm just gonna call it a fusion sauce. So we took the lumpias off. Gotta let it cool down for about five minutes. Uh, it'll crisp up even more. Also, you don't want to burn your mouth when you're trying to eat them because they do get really, really hot. You guys ready for the big reveal? Here we go. Beautiful. So, cool down a little bit. We're gonna try this one with the spicy coconut vinegar. This can taste good. Mm. Definitely money. Now we have barbecue sauce, pulled pork barbecue sauce. What can you go wrong? That's definitely it too. Now this is my top secret fusion sauce that I'm coming out with in a couple of months. And you know if my name's on it, you know it's money. That is it right here. I gotta go in for a second bite with this one. Mm. That's it. This is one of my favorite Pitmaster snacks, especially when you're trying to use up all them barbecue leftovers. Pulled pork is a great one, brisket, you know, beef cheeks, whatever it might be. Now, if you go ahead and try this on your own, Please tag me, tfti.bbq on all socials, and also tag Embers TV.
Thank you for watching Pitmaster's Notebook, streaming only on Embers TV.